I think that if I had grown up in another time, in another place, possibly with different parents, (laughs) I think I would have, I would also maybe be on a journey of exploring my own sexual identity. You know, I have dated girls here and there, but I always felt like dating men. Sorry, that's such a good secret. I'm dying. (laughs) Most importantly, do I look fuckable yeah. in this light? <laughs> How fuckable one through ten? Ben, just so you I'm know, everything is the wrong answer. <laughs> okay, welcome to Yent, everybody. Thank you. Oh, I thought you were talking to me specifically, but generally to everybody. But you too, you. Yay. Moana. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Yent. This is a huge yeah. deal. Huge. Yeah. We're yeah. so excited to have Moana. <laughs> oh, I should have ask this vein trub vine trub vine trub milana vine trub probably <gasps> i was actually thinking about your last name lazar yeah lazar so my grandfather's name is lazar l-a-z-a-r <gasps> and i recently and do you know what your last name means or where it's from uh no my family is sort of guessing that it's like like lazarus lazar yeah laser yes elazar elazar that's just what i i just I heard, have you guys seen um, Alex Edelman's show when oh, it was in town? Just yes. for us. Just for us. Yes. I haven't, but I want to. But it's, Antonio saw it. Yeah, I saw it. It's incredible. But it's amazing. He talks about the name Elazar. Oh, his dad's name is Elazar. And when yes. he said that, I had like a light bulb go off. And I was like, oh, maybe that's what my grandfather's name is or like a version of his name. Mm. And I thought that was beautiful. Because, you know, like the Soviets weren't allowed to be Jewish. Right. So I guess they just snuck it in any way they could. By saying la- Lazar. Lazar la- is like, like laser. Laser is very Jewish, I feel like. You la- mean like the tag? Yeah. The yes. Tag. <laughs> the tag. Jews love laser, laser tag. tag. It's this, what we're known for. That's a thing. Yeah. You know? well, I think Ugh, the stereotype of Jews and laser tag. <laughs> Well, like, we're definitely related. For yeah. sure. Let me introduce you to yeah. our amazing crowd. Okay. Hello, hello, viewers and listeners. Okay, Milana, you, I'm sure you know who she is. You she know is her. The AT&T spokesperson. Can I call you the AT&T girl? Whatever. Okay. How Whatever. do you identify? Uh, she, her, uh, AT&T. Jew. Yeah, AT&T. just whatever brand you'd like to place on my forehead, I will identify with that. Um, you've seen her in every single commercial for AT&T, which is probably, is, that's definitely your biggest credit because everybody sure. in, r- around the world knows you. It's the, the longest person. running job I've had and maybe anybody has had in the history of the world. <laughs> probably. I How think long has it been? You're the record. Uh, it's been like on and off since 2013, 2014. So yeah, 2013. 10 years. Almost 10 years. With a, we, we took a break in the middle. Wow. Wow. Yeah. A conscious uncoupling. Uh, uh, yeah yeah it was a conscious uncoupling and then in 2020 i had you know everyone was like how are we ever going to work again yes. and what are sets going to look like and i had pitched to them i was like what if we brought lily back but like lily works at home and i could direct it kind of like this kind of like the setup you have now Ooh, and just i could shoot it at home we had better cameras yeah. <laughs> but no one was more proficient than ben yeah. we didn't have a ben mm, which i could have no used ben. at that time and uh yeah and so it was just like kind of like a shot in the dark to this giant corporation and they liked it enough that we shot a few in my house by we i mean like i shot a few in my house and then um you know, it picked up. And then eventually when the world came back, we went into studios and then now it's a full campaign again. That's amazing. I love also how we're just like diving into the deep end of your career at the top of this interview. I know. No like, small talk here, huh? Mm-mm. You are. We what go I straight love is to like, the Yenta. <laughs> <laughs> this is, is, is that even Yenta adjacent? I don't know. <laughs> I, I just pitched feel- a corporation. Whoa, <laughs> no Yenta. Yeah. Wow. Gossip. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that is Yenta because you're like giving us the behind the scenes scoop. Oh yeah, I got. And no also, secrets. it's like girl boss. That yes, which I love, or which I do identify as. Good, that good, good. For okay, sure, okay. I definitely love the girl boss. Girl bass, girl, girl bass, girl, girl bass. <laughs> I'm a fish. <laughs> <laughs> love, love. <laughs> girl bass, the fish story. 
<laughs> you should maybe pitch that that's to a great cartoon <laughs> yes. i love that as an animated Bucks feature girl, girl, girl. girl. Really funny <laughs> oh my god also so also just to like list off your many accolades yes, please. you are marvel's squirrel girl <gasps> huge you're a marvel person mm-hmm. you're in basically like every notable sketch comedy <laughs> enterprise of the last decade like can peel college humor <gasps> Other ones. <laughs> Who am I yeah. forgetting? Good neighbor. Good neighbor. Titanic. Yeah, it's we're part of like the same OG sketch world for sure. Yeah, and you're amazing. And you're Thanks. in the werewolf werewolves within, mm-hmm. which I loved. Thank you. I love that movie too. Big twist. I yeah. won't give away the twist. Yeah, big twist. But Juicy. it's a good twist. It's a right bold twist. Well, I'm I'm on the edge of my seat here. <laughs> we can't, can't wait for you to see is, it. We can't tell you. Okay, don't tell me. I don't want to know. And but that's how you guys met too. We met doing through, improv. Yeah. Doing improv. And that's how we got this amazing interview. And Antonio is so freaking funny and weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the freedom that you have. And you know what else? And I think this is a good metaphor for life is your freedom and weirdness allowed everyone else to be freer and weirder. Ah. Oh, that means so much. Also, I want to say the same about you because you literally walked into this apartment and immediately busted out your coolest dance move. Mm-hmm. It's the only ones I have. Because we were playing They're Troy cool. Sivan Rush. <laughs> yes. Don't forget about that. Yeah, and I Grab couldn't not move. Yeah. Honestly, it was Troy's fault. Yeah. Also, you just pronounced his name in the most Jewish <laughs> yeah, way. <I> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good point. It's Sivan. It's not Sivan. like yeah, Troy Sivan. Yo, Sivan. I know, I because I see Sivan and I'm like, that's a that's you it's know a Sivan. Name. It's a yeah. Hebrew name, but it's not. That's that's wrong. I did it wrong. Mm, that's okay. Yeah. Anyway. I think in this room on this podcast, yes. you did it right. I think everything has to be pronounced Jewier on this podcast. Okay, that's I'll work on it. I'll yeah. work on it. <laughs> get, <laughs> get Jewy. Speaking of Jewy, yeah. Okay, so you also are connected to the podcast. Through one of our iconically Jewy guests, Sammy Cohen. Mm -hmm. Yes, one of my dearest, bestest. And Sammy talked about you on their episode. Yeah. And we didn't know that they were talking about you. Yeah. What did they say? Well, they were talking about, you know, you guys were talking about nepotism and how we all just actually just want to work with our friends. Yes. And Sammy brought up that 10 years ago they were making videos in their mom's garage with their friend. And that person that they were making videos is now a director and someone that they want to work with. And that's me. Are you working I, together? We are always threatening to, but we actually mm. haven't worked together in a really long time. But the dream is to work together. Yeah. You know, whenever we have an opportunity, we're always trying to just hand the other person the ball. Yeah. I really love them so much and I'm so proud of them. And aren't they just, they're amazing. Just crushing so hard. Yeah. And let me amazing. tell you, there is no one who deserves it more. Like, uh, and I know you think you deserve it more. (laughs) (laughs) And I know that you're right. I I don't. I don't. Ben deserves it maybe more than Sammy. (laughs) But I mean, it's just like they really climbed the ranks, like in in the realest way Mm. in from like assisting people and being an editor and being a PA and being uh, like a YouTube content creator, like mm. there were so a, a music video director, and then also there were so many opportunities for us because we were in the sketch world early and in UCB world early, where we could just meet creative people and then be like, "Let's make something." We were so addicted to making things. That's together, what, I know? feel like that's what we're in that's right now. That's where we're we're at. like at the like, little like let's like make shit all the time. Like we yes. spent four hours yesterday making things, and we were like, "This is fun." This is the most fun. Yeah, it, it was amazing. Yeah, and also Sammy like. When they left right after their interview, interview, we both were like, oh, my God, I understand why they're so successful because yes. they are so nice and so smart. They're yeah. so smart. They're so nice. They're just such a pleasure to talk to. Mm-hmm. I was like, of course, Adam Sandler met them and was like, I have to bring this person into my family yeah. business. Yeah. Sammy <laughs> has incredible ideas and is is like an asset in every room they're in. I'm I'm really yeah, I'm in awe of them. And it's really cool, you know, seeing them now talk about their journey to coming out, coming yeah. out twice and uh, like witnessing them in all their stages of evolution. And be, honestly, I think that's what I'm most inspired by. Like the career shit is cool, but like mm-hmm. seeing somebody really become themselves is so 
it, it it's it's um it's like contagious and magnetic not that i have anything to come out with but i think the challenge of being more yourself is really cool ew <laughs> should i throw up in my mouth is everyone I was like, oh. <laughs> tell me I what love, was gross about I, it no no it was so cute i love tell your me dynamic what was gross. <laughs> i want to know no it wasn't gross at all can i ask you something when you think about like posting something and then you're like this might be too cringy to post or oh, like I don't every want- day okay yeah is there like a specific person that you imagine cringing you're like, oh my god that's such a good question well do you have a specific person i do yeah Who i have this it? one comedian tell us no Name drop them. no it's the most embarrassing thing and if they ever watched i this is a person i haven't seen in years i'm sure they're gonna watch this never going to think about me this person never thinks about me never i'm 100 percent sure i'm not even sure if she follows me but I think about them judging me and mm. isn't that sad That's and sick? So incredible. That's so beautiful what heights she has been elevated to yes. in your mind. Yes. Well, I, she think, I think it's know. because I respect her so much. Yeah. I think it's because I think her comedy is so smart. Yeah. And but, not like anything I do. Her her thing is very different than mine. But I'm just like, oh God, she's seeing this and totally yeah. thinking I'm basic. I have I have a person you have too. A person. Do you have a person? hundred. I have so many people. Oh, you have a, few. <laughs> I have a million. <laughs> wow. And but you know what? I love that because like all of us have that people that no, they don't actually give a they fuck give about a us. Fuck. But you know what? Now and we, we know. are probably that to somebody. You oh are my God. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, well, let's talk about, can we talk about, like, your Jewish background? Yeah. Great, because, wait, you tell us a little bit about your Jewish background, and also talk about your, your bat mitzvah a little bit. Oh. Yeah, because we're on the bat mitzvah yeah. theme with Sammy. Oh, okay, so, which, which should I do first? Your Jewish background. Uh, so I'm a Soviet Jew. I came to this country when I was two and a half, uh, literally landed a few blocks that way, mm-hmm. and, uh, my family didn't grow up being Jewish because of the communism of it all. So they kind of discovered their Judaism here. My grandmother was a nanny for an Orthodox Jewish family and she'd come home and be like, we light candles on Friday. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then my mom would come home from like her job working with Americans and she's like, we're getting a Christmas tree. And so we just (laughs) kind of like learn, it was like what was American and what was Jewish were things that were being learned at the same time. And, um, And then I, because I grew up in this neighborhood, which was very Soviet and Jewish, I went to school up until third grade. I think I only knew Jewish people. Um, And then I went to school in like another very Jewish neighborhood. So like Jews were the majority of the students in my world. Yeah. And so like I, that's all, I I thought like being Jewish was normal and I didn't really experience anti-Semitism, but my parents did Mm -hmm. in the worlds that they came from. So I think being a part of a Jewish community was important to them and uh, was probably why we landed in the neighborhoods we did so that everyone felt safe. Huh. Um, and West then Hollywood was the Jewish community. Was the, the was the Soviet, the Jewish, Soviet community, Jewish community. For sure. And also like, you know, Fairfax was very Jewish. Right. Now Fairfax it's like right here, sneaker dog. heads yeah, and, yeah. and foodies. But like, yeah. it was very Jewish. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And now like, how Jewy do you feel? I love that question. Um... I feel an immense like pride in my Judaism because of um, like what my family has gone through in terms of like, you know, my mother's grandfathers fought the Nazis. Like we, you know, we were part of the the Russian army that defeated the Nazis. And I think that's really fucking badass. Um, and I love the connection to an ancient existence and that there, it's there's a text about it. My friend described it as like, imagine reading Lord of the Rings and being like, I'm a hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love that. I'm yeah. like, there's a text about us? Yeah, like, that is, and that, so and that it's And that we're still around and we still exist. And I don't know what it is. And I'm sure like Italians feel this with each other. But there's like a familial feeling with other Jews. Um, And I don't know how much of that is like my heart and how much of that is my head. 
but I love feeling like you're my people. Not that I also don't feel that with a lot. I feel that with a lot of people who aren't Jewish as well. Mm -hmm. My husband isn't Jewish, but I, yeah, I, I love the feeling of oneness and I love the traditions. I, I think Shabbat is really beautiful and I love singing the song and I love teaching my what son. Song? Just, just the, um, the, sh- the Shabbat lighting the candles. Song. Oh, no. Nice. Do you yeah. sing it or do you say it? I just say it. Oh, I love just, I sing it. it. I grew up just yeah, singing it. Yeah, yeah, I sing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But, I but sing we have so Han- many other songs. I sing the yeah, yeah. melody on Shabbat. Me too. Yes. It's the best one. Well, it's the only one I know. Oh, no, I don't do that one, but that sounds really cool. You do. Yeah. That's very cute. You spice it up. Now, what do you hate about Judaism? Yeah. Oh. This is Yenta. Yeah. We complain. Let's kvetch. Because (laughs) you don't have to say anything. (laughs) No, yeah, you don't. But, like, the Lord of the Rings is too long. Oh, right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, is this now code for the text? Sure. <laughs> yeah. okay, yeah, for the Torah. The I Torah. don't have when a When we lot. say Lord of the Rings, we mean Torah. You know, I think the only thing that I have a problem with in Judaism, which is just my problem with any religion, is that it has a ranking system. Um, it says that this kind of person is better than this kind of person, which I think like a great part of my thirties has been dismantling any kind of hierarchy that I have in my head. It just makes me feel so much freer and Mm. I feel like religion kind of enforces hierarchy. So not, not cool with that. Um, same. Yeah. I'll say it. That I feel so, the same. That's yeah. so brave. Of really you. brave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you create your own bandwagon to jump on? Wow. Um, yeah, what about you? What do you hate about Judaism? Patriarchy. Yeah. What you and, said. and not not even just the the gender patriarchy of it, yeah, but all like of it. the even the like that we are the chosen people idea I don't really love. Yeah. Which I don't think is is f- a fundamental idea to Judaism, no, but I think it gets thrust upon Judaism by both outside forces mm-hmm. and by people who don't know an, a lot. That's true. That's are, actually totally true who, because I, I, I think what's actually the most Jewish, and this is why, like when we talk about war or whatever else, I'm like, no, actually, what's the most Jewish is th- is believing that everyone everyone is made in the image of God. Yeah, is that, like Aww. everyone is is equal and beautiful. And then the most most Jewish thing is to say is complaining and about one, everyone yeah, equally, exactly. <laughs> and they're all terrible. <laughs> We're all one, that's and we right, all suck. Actually, <laughs> yeah. but don't you feel like that's incredibly uniting to yes. be like we are all good inside and assholes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, what a touching little episode. (laughs) So my bat mitzvah. Yes, thank God you're on. I was, um, I'm taking notes. Um, I I, I had it in college, actually. So my actual bat mitzvah when I was like 12, 13, I had a party. Um, It wasn't very big. It wasn't very fancy. I was supposed to do a candlelight ceremony. Um, you know, did you guys do that? A candle oh, lighting yeah. ceremony? Yeah, where you like light a candle for I'd every... I'd like to bring up... Yes. My aunt. My best friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to light a candle for my dog. My mom didn't <laughs> let me do that. Um, did, you, did you do like a rhyming poem for them? No. So my dad uh, happened to be arrested a few weeks before my bat mitzvah. <laughs> um, he was innocent. Can we say but why? Yes, he was... Um, he was flying secret. from oh yeah okay great my dad was arrested <laughs> for my bat mitzvah um he was in uh flying from moscow to la um bought tickets from a travel agent the travel agent was shady uh the tickets were forged he had a stop in paris we flying from moscow paris paris la they stopped him in paris arrested him we did not find out for days where he was we just knew he didn't get on the flight to LA oh my god and he was just missing in Paris that's terrifying it was terrifying it was really terrifying um and there was the, no cell the, phones yeah yeah no it, FaceTime. but the whole actual like come on cup come upance of it is like really um justice filled and like ultimately I think it's a it's a great story for me who was not in prison yeah. for my dad. He's like, I still hate the French. Yeah. I hate French food. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he spent like a month in jail, missed my bat mitzvah. A month? A month in jail. It took a long time. Listen, airlines are not to be fucked with. Wow. 
whoa and well, i guess the french also also fuck travel agents That's oh why well yeah sh- that person i think ended up going to having whatever his deal was i'm not sure actually and that's why travel agents don't exist anymore i but that's c- why because they're not to be trusted mm-hmm. i can't believe that this was the backdrop to your bat mitzvah yeah, so oh my god so i know were you just like anxious the whole time i think i was anxious for my entire childhood <laughs> <laughs> like this building i was saying you know i grew up a few blocks from here this building really reminds me of my childhood. And I, as I was coming in here, I went into the, like the elevators right next to the garage and I went into the garage and looked around and I was like, Oh, I have so much nostalgia. This garage reminds me of so much of my garage where I would like play kickball with my friend. And then I was like, Oh, I feel immediately anxious. Like there's very few things that make me feel nostalgic that don't also make me feel really anxious, which I think is my body remembering how Mm. anxious I felt probably for my whole childhood. Mm. What do you think that, anxiety was about do you want to get you want to get annoying <laughs> yeah, let's, um, let's get fucking into it i mean i think my parents fought a lot mm, yeah same my dad was gone a lot um money didn't feel like a certainty there wasn't a lot of certainty i think generally um there was like a pressure to behave a certain way always mm. and there was a um pushing down of my instincts and my wants regularly so i think just a muting there was an, an, an overall muting and there probably wasn't an opportunity to even say i feel anxious or i feel uncomfortable it was all mm-hmm. about other people's experience of me mm. and i th- and that's what's so wonderful about like being where i am now where i actually feel really free and uh, happy and I don't give too much of a fuck and I actually think part of the secret to my alignment is really doing whatever the fuck I want that's how uh, we started this podcast yeah <laughs> I was like Milana you don't have to answer any questions if you don't want to and she was like I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah in a, like a loving yes, way no, in the but best then, way but then also like don't you just want to be around people who only want to do what yes. they want isn't it so yes. hard to be in the presence of people that you have to like second guess being like you can tell me if you're uncomfortable do you want to leave are you sure yeah. you're okay are you-? that's really uh it, it feels like actually dishonest in a way do you feel like in LA you have to deal with a lot of those kinds of people or um, in the biz? I don't deal with anybody. Um, <laughs> uh, Your people do that. I, yeah, yeah, my people. Um, no, I think at least now I am like, I can check in with somebody and be like, do you want to leave? Are you sure? Yeah. You know, I, I think I could do that. But I am also really trusting that like people are adults. They're yeah. doing their own work. And if they want something it's their job to tell me oh i love that (laughs) send it to print (laughs) (laughs) it's yeah we on that note on that you did say you need to leave soon so let's oh is it soon okay anyway so i had my bat mitzvah in college yes i I had an amazing (laughs) rabbi rabbi lisa goldstein i went to like a uh, yeah i I I love her so much i love her she's the best shout out so this is the most jewish thing about me is i went to a shabbat at my hillel uh at ucsd shout out um and i you know i just went for like the party and the food and like the boys and rabbi lisa goldstein sang and something in hebrew it didn't understand but i wept Mm. full-on chills tears and I was like, is, is everyone else experiencing this? Is it, is it, does this mean that I'm very Jewish? Or does, does she just have a, is she just an angel? Does she just have a beautiful voice? Like, what is this connection that I'm feeling right now? And so after that, I went and talked to her. And I was like, I think I'm feeling something Jewish in my body. And, uh, and so then I started studying with her to become a bat mitzvah and it was very cute. I had like, you know, little Orthodox boys. No, they weren't little, but just like, you know, other students teaching me how to read in Hebrew mm. and how to have a Torah portion. And then kind of in my, oh, and then I got to have my bat mitzvah, like kind of aligned with my graduation, which I actually felt was like way cooler than my graduation. Mm-hmm. I didn't even go to my graduation, but um, my family came out for that and I got to have it in the oldest synagogue in San Diego, which is like Aww. really tiny and intimate and even in my speech then which is i think going back to like what i don't vibe with in judaism or any religion i was kind of like everything that i've learned 
that is referred to as God, I have always known and felt, but I've just called it like the chemistry that two people feel in a three mm. people feel in a conversation, mm. you two Ben, four people feel in a conversation <laughs> or like the, like nature or, you know, the magic. Yeah. I do yeah. really, and even now, I really, really believe in magic, like the magic of the world. Mm -hmm. And so I'm down to call it God. If you guys want to call it God, I'll call it God. Sure. But I, um, yeah. And then, um, and then my parents gave me a juicer as a present. <laughs> Jew, a Jew, <laughs> sir. That's right. Pun, That's pun right. intended. Yes. Pun very intended. Very heavily intended. Wow. It's, I feel like bat mitzvahs are wasted on 13 year olds. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> like, they don't get anything out of this. Well, it's all about the show. It's all about yes. everyone's else's experience, everyone else's experience. Yeah. yeah. And you actually got to like study because you yeah. chose like, to. Yeah, yeah. I was, and it, it being a choice is very cool. And I feel like you turned into a little like Hasidic master. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, it's in nature. It's yeah. in chemistry. Yes. I was just always already like a little very hippie Hasidic. baby. Do you remember the song that you cried to? No. 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 But I've hung out Antonio with Rabbi Lisa. Okay, so yeah, I will sing you like <laughs> 60 of them. <laughs> and you, you just tell me when I hit it. <laughs> you know Antonio runs like singing, Jewish singing circles. I think I did know that. Yeah. Yes. That's I'm doing beautiful. like a ton of Jewish singing circles. Lots in, of crying. In LA. She loves did it. Did you grow? Oh, do you cry during them? Oh, fuck yeah. Really? It's my way of getting high. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just think singing is like, mm. it's like the way you have ecstatic experiences without drugs. Yes. And drugs sex. probably make it better. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. And, and it's like how you feel community. It's how you feel something like beyond you, something transcendent. So I'm like obsessed with singing in groups, not for <sighs> performance, but what for experience. It, you should I don't know any do of that the songs. Me. I'll teach you some. She's a very good teacher. Okay. I don't know the songs that she teaches either. Really? Yeah, because they're like, because I grew up Orthodox, so like it's a like totally different set of songs. Have you talked on the podcast about your experience straying from Orthodox Judaism? Once or twice. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. But I'm happy to talk about it. It's okay. More. Let's do this. Let's, let's live for the listeners. It's for, this we'll for catch you. up separately. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is really a you podcast. And I, and I, and I want to get you out when you want to get out. And we have so much more to talk about. Should okay. we do Matzah Minute? Yeah, we're going to do Matzah Minute. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! This that is, was the exact reaction that I wanted. <laughs> this is a new brainchild. Matzah Minute. We don't have any matzah for you, but it, you can either answer the question or eat a piece of matzah, but we don't have matzah, so... <laughs> Imaginary okay, let's matzah. Try it. Let's try it. Okay. Favorite thing a fan has said to you on the street? Oh... I have bad memory. Um, or it could be the most annoying thing that someone has said to you on the street. <laughs> or anything you oh, remember. The thing, the, thing that, <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I get like most often is like, hey, I actually, I'm with AT&T. Or like, hey, I'm actually not with AT&T. <laughs> and I'm like couldn't don't do that this is i do not collect a commission yeah, that's so <laughs> annoying i have a job i really enjoy my job thank you you, you should know. get paid for every time someone <laughs> you should put that in your contract it's it, it's honestly it is because i am such a fan of so many people that anytime i mean anything to anybody i'm like what a gift yeah oh. what a gift oh. what a gift oh that's so, that's so beautiful. sweet oh. okay hard-hitting oh. question ram going off script here yeah um What's your take on the millennial versus Gen Z wide leg versus skinny leg situation? You know what? Now we are at the age, maybe you are not, but I think you and I are the same age. I'm a little younger. I'm 33. Oh, okay. So, uh, I, but, but still, I think maybe we are now at the age where we are seeing the things that we remember being in fashion that went out of fashion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come back into fashion. And there was a time when they went out of fashion that we were all like, yeah, I'm glad that's out of fashion. Cause you know what? We were hypnotized by that trend. We thought it looked good. And now we realize it did not look good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then those things come back. And that's when you realize, oh, I am just whipped by trends. 
and that none of it is real. All of fashion is arbitrary and it's all of us just trying to like fit in and be liked by other people. <laughs> and now I am living with this like imaginary voice of like uh, Gen Zers and what's the next one? Gen Alpha. Alpha. Like them judging me and uh, that I can't keep up with. And I'm like, you know, when I think about how I'm dressed and because now I'm really on this kick of only doing whatever the fuck I want, I wear something and I, sometimes I don't even look in the mirror and I'm like, do I like the way this feels? Like, do I like the way my butt feels in this? <laughs> Honestly, I feel like that, like you just turned our podcast into an episode of like Glennon Doyle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I love her. That is why. I love her too. Yeah. I love her podcast. Her I, book changed my life. Oh, really? Not to be dramatic about it. Uh, her podcast yeah. is my yeah, go-to. It's, yeah. Incredible. This one. You yeah. should I'll be obviously. on her podcast. You should. Can you guys tell her we'll about that? We'll call her. We'll call her. We'll um, have our people. I um I once on set by the way I, I notice I keep saying you guys and it's just a habit I'm really trying to break because one time I was on Ugh, set yeah. and they wanted me to say like back to you guys in the studio and I'm like I don't want to say you guys on TV can I say like back to y'all in the studio or back to whatever their names are in the studio and they're like no people say you guys that's what you're gonna say and it was like this whole fucking conversation and I was the annoying feminist on set mm. and I'm really trying to not say it I've, I'm constantly the annoying feminist on set but I I'm really trying to change it and it's so ingrained but I also know a lot of people especially like non-binary people are really comfortable with you guys like they're like yes. it's a preferred thing yeah. and so I what are your thoughts on that oh my god I don't I, I don't it doesn't bother it doesn't me doesn't bother you yeah kind of basic about that i think about it all the time because yeah. i went through a long time like pulling it kicking and screaming out of my vocabulary mm. and then i was like all my queer friends use <laughs> you guys yeah <laughs> and i was like i don't know i still defer to not using it but i also feel like when i say y'all it's cultural appropriation <laughs> <laughs> so i say you all yeah. which is awful i say you people you you Idiots. people <laughs> back to you cute babies in the studio yeah, that's better mm -hmm. yeah that's better cute, hey you cute babies. hey you tiny little baby in the studio <laughs> uh, back to matzo minute yes we're doing matzo right? five minutes more than matzo minute Love okay it. what is the juiciest gossip that you have from a set Ooh. um God, I think the thing that's like really juicy, I just shouldn't say. You can say it without names. Um, or I've or just we like, can bleep out. I've just worked with, I worked with one guy that was so not nice mm. and like mean and I had to kiss him. And I think it made me a worse actor because I like, it, first uh. of all, everyone, every, every actor does a better job when they feel safe. Yeah. And at least, uh, you know, and every I think human. every creative. Yeah. Right. Yes. Probably every human. <laughs> but like every, because our job is so much about our personality, like we're already working to convey something, but then to work to convey and cover something mm. with so many layers of work. And also, I don't, I talk about this all the time because it's my favorite TED talk, but there's a TED talk where they hooked up jazz musicians' brains to see which part of them is responsible for spontaneous creation like where does improv come from and what was interesting about it is that there isn't a part of your brain that creates spontaneously but actually a part of your brain that goes to sleep and it's a part of our brain that we use to watch ourselves or to apologize i think it was the frontal cortex i could be wrong i'm that not a neuroanatomist right. <laughs> <laughs> writer director improviser neuroanatomist <laughs> you can do it all i can do it all you're an angry feminist <laughs> you can do it all angry slash, slash angry feminist yeah. yeah so anyway i just think like we have to feel like we're not apologizing or not watching ourselves in order to feel super free mm. and I, I working with people who are like mean makes me so self-conscious because again like I don't really have those people in my life mm. so yeah. to be in a situation where you're forced to have that person in your life really blows that sucks yeah can you complain on set when that well what you look like you were gonna say something really juicy oh no I was gonna oh. ask is that like juicy enough of a goss oh that's you? pretty juicy it's pretty yeah. juicy yeah yeah I like that someone that you had to kiss yeah that sucks. It does Was suck. the kiss. Yeah. It wasn't Sam Richardson, <laughs> who's the sweetest, best. Yeah. That's good to hear. Process of elimination. Lovely. Just tell us who, it, who it's not. Great. That's awesome. What about, you have access to a world of gossip that we don't, which is parent <laughs> gossip. <gasps> yeah. What's like the juiciest shit going on in the parent world? Mm. 
I think like uh, there's like a d- divisive uh, line right now that I'm noticing where like parents are not making their kids say please and thank you, hmm. which I kind of hmm. love. It's like, no, they're, it's part of language. The way that you ask for something is you put please in a sentence. So if you use it at home, your kid will learn to say please. And one of the schools of thought for it that my therapist actually told me um, name drop <laughs> that I love one of my many therapists told me <laughs> is uh, <laughs> I need so much help you think I just got this way you think my mom just made me this way um, <laughs> did you hear what I said about my childhood <laughs> this took work and money <laughs> um, so <laughs> the thing is like you and this is probably the thing that I didn't experience and for sure you didn't experience was like this uh, ability to just be like yes I want that Oh, mm. as a without, without definitely not. Definitely yeah. not. You, we had to be like, what's the right way to say that we want something so that everyone else is okay with it? So we are polite enough. So we're not putting anyone out. So we are not burdening anybody. Mm. Yes, and that like self watching has made it so that so many of us are having a harder time tapping into what it is that we even want and voicing <laughs> what we want especially as women. So the thing that I'd like to give my kid is the ability to, to like know what he wants, Mm. you know? And so when he's like, I want that, I'm like, okay, great. Here you go. And sometimes I'll go, thanks mom. You know? And he'll go, (laughs) Oh, right. Thanks mom. But you know, like I'm not doing the like, uh, say please. Like I have power over you. Uh. And if you perform correctly, then you get the thing that you want. So, um, and, and then there are plenty of people who are like, ask nicely, say thank you, which I'm like, I think, you know, my husband and I, like our house has, is so well-mannered that he's going to pick it up. I'm not worried about it. That's beautiful. That is, <laughs> that is so beautiful. And, and I feel like after Glennon Doyle sees this, she's definitely going to put you on a She's going to snap you up. You're, you're, you're just uh, throwing out the insight after insight. I love talking about everything. I yeah. love that. <laughs> I'm not like, to make I it like talking. super <laughs> dark, but like the, I've been, I have like a real history of doing work around abuse mm-hmm. and and there's this like big question, especially with childhood abuse, that we put a lot of pressure on kids to say no mm. to their abuser. Mm. And and there's virtually no other place in a child's life no practice. where we encourage them to say no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we're like, you know, say no to this creepy adult who's crossing your boundary, but say yes to every single other adult. Mm-hmm. And so to hear that you're like, teaching your kid to know what he actually wants Mm -hmm. gorge yeah why not what's your dream job i'd like to direct a movie i'd like to work with sammy cohen in every capacity possible Mm. um seems doable yeah it's gonna happen um i i just like love telling stories around uh gender and patriarchy i love telling stories about immigrants Mm -hmm. so um it's really more like the themes and the people i am happy to never be any more famous than i am i think like i'm just about as like famous as i i feel safe (laughs) (laughs) and uh and sometimes feel unsafe right and so it's really like less about like the big thing and more about how i spent my time and i just want to spend my time telling stories that I care about with people I care about. Beautiful. Glennon, if you're listening, yeah. <laughs> snap this woman up. My God. Glennon I thought you were going to say, Glennon, <laughs> snap out of it. <laughs> you got this woman on your podcast. What are you thinking? She has a TV show coming out. Really? About, about her life. Oh, Have yes. And Sarah that? Paulson is playing her. Yes. Oh, 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 I can't course. fucking wait. Oh, my God. The genius that is Sarah Paulson yes. is playing her. What a dream. Honestly, we're turning into a real room of people who go, mmm, mmm, <laughs> <laughs> which is so very on brand. <laughs> um, sh- how are we doing? We, uh, it's almost four. Yeah. So normally we have our little secrets, but. Oh, let's do it. Well, do we have time? Yeah, let's just do one secret each. I don't know how this Yeah, works. we'll do okay. it really quick. Okay. Okay, okay here's <laughs> my secret. Um, so 
so on the pod, I've been talking a lot about my gender journey and embracing my non-binariness and getting top surgery, mm-hmm. which is coming up. On the yes. Sammy Cohen episode. Yes, on the yes. Sammy Cohen I, episode. Yes. Exactly. And um, top surgery is still a long way away because my health isn't good enough for it yet. Mm-hmm. And I can't. And so I just bought my first binder, which is amazing, except that I can't wear a binder because I have extreme acid reflux. Mm. So I bought a binder that's three sizes too big. It does no binding. Mm -hmm. It's (laughs) a loose sports bra. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's a tube top. Unsupportive (laughs) tube top. (laughs) But we and can I'm call wa- it. and I've worn it every single day, Aww. and I I look at it in its weird little binder shape, and I'm like, yeah, mm. and it just makes me feel so cute. Ugh. that's my secret. My secret is you can't tell because it looks like I'm wearing an unsupportive bra, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, then but it's, it's actually really gender here. affirming. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love. The just like as a character, how fucking cute it is that you're that you're just not well enough to do (laughs) the things that you want to do. That's like just so I it's I I feel for you, and also it's such a cute thing. It's like a really sad, tragic way. I'm like a very fragile (laughs) little Victorian child. Yeah, I know. I've done improv with you where you're like, uh, someone in this room had a Snickers, I have to go home. I once ran out of our improv class to go throw up in the bathroom for an hour. Mm-hmm. We were very uh, worried. We were very worried. <laughs> oh my god, I feel emotional just even talking about it. It's beautiful. What's coming up? Big. My health has been very frustrating. Yeah. This year. And this binder is beautiful. I bought I also bought one that is my size and I wore it for 30 seconds yeah. before I threw up really yeah literally you vomed i vomed wow and i was like did you take it off before you vomed no it was too fast <laughs> oh it was god. just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god that's, that's great. what's um what's going on with your health now it's like my nerve it's just like clear that my nervous system of my stomach is not working right the nerves are like interpreting regular things food being in your stomach as like danger and so, yeah. But friend of the pod, Avital Ash, mm-hmm. do you know her? Of course I do. Yes, yeah. very well. She actually, on her episode, I don't know if it's on the episode or after the episode we talked about it, she recommended a med that has really helped me. Oh, I'm All so thanks glad. to the pod. Yeah. Two guests on the pod have. Yes, and, and Pallavi has yeah. been connecting me with people who do vagus nerve stimulation which I use an electric vagus nerve stimulator to help my stomach. And Pallavi is an engineer. Her day job, she's a comedian, but her day job is being an engineer of these things. Honestly, the pod just sounds like a long con to create a network of women (laughs) or or non-binary people to just... Like w- what to a you all my you union figured it out. Yeah. You got it. That's exactly this what is a it great is. way to make friends. No. I love it. <laughs> That's a hundred percent the truth. Yeah, actually. it actually. When is. I when I started, I was like, I don't care if anybody watches this. I just want to meet wanna people, make and no one's gonna get coffee with me in LA, but they will come on the podcast. Well, I'll, I'll get coffee with. I'm actually my my meeting after this is with somebody. I'm just getting coffee with. That is not a friend, but is it? Well, it will be a friend. That's so great because you are like legitimately famous. Yeah. And to hear that you're willing to just like go on a coffee. But are you getting coffee with someone who's also famous? No, No. this is a director that I met at a short festival who's a UCB writer. And um, and I really liked her work. And yeah, what I wanted to ask about, because you said you're like at a level of fame that you really like right now. Mm -hmm. That's like not dangerous but like safe what what does that look like to you like what what is that how is it like just getting approached on the street a lot but in like a nice way i think people people don't approach too much sometimes mm -hmm. i'll like notice a group of people talking about me because everyone's looking at me yeah and then i could like say hi and be a human and i enjoy being a human and i think that's like i enjoy being like I have a mom and I have a digestive system and yeah. I, hi, I poop. Like <laughs> I like 
That's how you I'd say like, hi to them. Yeah. Hello. I <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I just want to be a human. And I yeah. think there's a part of fame where you stop thinking that people are people. 100%. And uh, I I just only want to, like, I just want to be real. You yeah, know? bro. Real like us. <laughs> just, <laughs> just us guys hanging out. Yo, Whoa. Those are real freaking accents yeah, you got going. Hey, thanks, man. You Let's said go. to make things Jewier, and I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you just made it more Brooklyn. I actually thought of a secret while we we're while you oh, were talking. Great. Tell us. I think that if I had grown up in another time, in another place, possibly with different parents, <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have. I would also maybe be on a journey of exploring my own sexual identity. Mm. Um, but that was it, it, like I you know I have dated girls here and there but I always felt like dating men Sorry, is so, that's such so a lame. good secret I'm dying <laughs> no. It? no it's amazing keep going keep going it, it feels <laughs> like um it, and I am genuinely attracted to men and I love my husband and I there's I say this to him all the time but there is literally no other man in the world I'm attracted to mm. <laughs> like I just mm. maybe not attracted to I mean there yeah. but like no other man I would marry ever yeah because they're so <laughs> gross yeah. um <laughs> but I think that it was always just so assumed that it was men that I yeah. didn't, especially from a young age, give myself the opportunity. And like, you know, the, the getting used to a penis was so weird for me that it was like that, that I could, if the world were a little different, if the world were a little bit more open for me at that time, which is bizarre. Cause I grew up in fucking West Hollywood, mm -hmm. the gayest city, the gayest city, well, but like but in this Jewish enclave, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. West no. Hollywood. Yeah. 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 Um, that, you know, maybe it would be different. And so now when I hear about like 25 year old Russian Jews that are coming out, I am just like, fuck yes. Like, I'm just so proud of them. And again, it's kind of like me witnessing Sammy's journey. Like, I'm just, I'm, I think it's so wonderful to be authentic. Bravo. That's a really good secret. And <laughs> so cute. I feel like there are did a lot of people. Did anything I say is it, did anything I say uh, make you guys cringe? Um, I'm offended. I heard you're bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it, yes, and I've known that about myself. But my I head, never. I mean, sorry if I just. Yeah, spoke would you for call you? Just, bisexual? you just outed me. I just totally outed I you. I haven't called myself bisexual because I feel like I have all of the privileges of a straight woman. And so for me to like, you know, when you like apply for like a writing job, they're like, are you part of the LGBT community? Mm. And I'm like, not, or they say, are you, do you identify as LGBT? And I'm like, I don't really, I get so much of the straight person life that it feels like if you're looking for somebody to fill that role, that's probably not me. There's probably somebody who could do that better. Who also like, has overcome has like lived with the things that i haven't and mm. not and for better or worse what do you think about that antonia here's my take she, she'll have an opinion you don't I, have an opinion i have no opinion <laughs> oh no <laughs> she'll have a good opinion okay my take is i completely understand not wanting to leverage any queerness for benefit and i also think that bisexuals will save the world because mm -hmm. there are so many people in heterosexual relationships who are bisexual, mm -hmm. especially in extremely conservative communities. Mm -hmm. And seeing examples like you in an opposite sex relationship, but acknowledging your queerness, mm -hmm. you're giving those people like a really relatable model mm -hmm. that lets them acknowledge that they could be queer too. Mm -hmm and not have to change anything about their lifestyle mm -hmm. or who they love, you know? Yeah. And so in terms of visibility, I think it's like a very powerful message to be someone in an opposite sex relationship who acknowledges their bisexuality. Hmm. I told you Beautiful. she'd have a good answer. It's just the best. She's I like want to pay you to consult. Yeah, she's like very good <laughs> at that. I, I'm just kind of like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I think everyone is gay. Yeah. So I, I um, I'm happy that you came out. Here we are. Uh, May this uh, be the clip that fucking the Yahoo <laughs> News picks up. <laughs> <Yeah. out. laughs> 
<laughs> That's the goal of uh, the podcast. Fuck you, Yahoo, Yahoo News, News, by the way. What have they done? Oh, they do things like I was on a, <laughs> an, another friend's podcast where I was talking about how like having a baby changes your relationship and now you really need to prioritize your relationship. Like before it was like the relationship is the priority and then you have a kid and you're like, I would throw my husband in front of a bus for my child. He no longer matters. Yeah. And But you really <laughs> have to like prioritize the marriage because you have to remember that you're lovers and you have to like not just be co-producers in this parenting project. Mm. And they misconstrued they, they flipped it around to be like <sighs> actress says she prioritizes her husband for a healthy marriage and it made me sound like such a 50s housewife <laughs> and it's just like they That's they just so like annoying. take little sound bites yeah. or like mm-hmm. i'll talk about abort i had an abortion it wasn't a big deal and they will take things about the actress says abortion was best thing that ever happened <laughs> <laughs> like, everyone, everyone should be beautiful <laughs> if she could frame the fetus she would <laughs> like it's like <laughs> so you heard it here milana <laughs> is about appeasing her husband <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here I am. and killing fetuses oh. love it juicy juicy yeah. gas there's my secret <laughs> that's really good what do you do in that situation like can you like talk can you be like yahoo stop or you have to just like um, get I just you. go on other podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think, yeah, I've thought about it a lot with like everything. I mean, with every article that's ever came out where I'm like, oh, now you're painting me as a fucking victim or you're yeah. painting me as this. I think the realization, and I hope everyone understands this, is that like articles, even news, even respected publications yeah. are clickbait. Mm. Not all news. No, they are but it's clickbait. It's a for-profit business. It wants you to click on it so that the little ads on the side make money, mm-hmm. m- you know, get other clicks. And so they're n- they have no allegiance to me. They have no responsibility. Um, even articles that have like fact-checked me have then gone on to, s- to frame things in so many weird, skewed ways. And so yes, to, to answer your question, I think, there are times where I'm like, should I just like fucking make a TikTok where I like green screen this article and like point out every time they were yeah. fucking sexist or like just committing rape culture 101 atrocities <laughs> or and then I'm like, I don't know, I guess save it for the memoir. Like, yeah. do I give them more clicks because what they want is clicks or do I just like, you know, when you we, like, we were talking about the dream project, like or do I just keep thinking about about the value of my time Mm. and my time would probably rather be spent like with my friends and family but the other part of me so I go back and forth a lot yeah there's another part of me that's like this is how they silence women like they could say anything and I'm like I don't want to give them any clicks I don't want to give them any attention and then they're all of these like you know article like you and google that's me such and a then, woman problem too like you yes. lose either way yes there's no way to win in that situation yes i'm thinking if that happened to me i would just be like i'd be so devastated i like how can you like paint me in the wrong way like that mm-hmm. but i feel like it's kind of something you just have to get used to i still get devastated by yeah. them yeah 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 cool there was an article that came out like right around the holidays where i'm like oh that's what you fucking like that's what you took from our conversation. They like interviewed right. me. I'm like, that's what you took is that I'm a fucking victim of a harassment that happened three years ago that I no longer give a shit about. But the mm-hmm. other thing is like the internet loves and people love a story about like a wounded woman. I know. Even though I really feel not wounded genuinely anymore. I feel really empowered in my life. I'm like, oh, they just want, they really love telling a story about you just like in pain mm-hmm. and hurting. This is the clip for the episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ouch, ouch, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> Ray, ouch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, was that a wound? <laughs> Ow, Ray, why do you keep poking my wound? <laughs> my open wound. <laughs> it's like. I can't, I can't even pretend to hurt you. You're so <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. um, your secret? Oh, wait, my secret, very quick. I'll do a quickie, which is that um, I, this is, feels really embarrassing. I, I love Timothy Chalamet. Same. He's just Ugh. beautiful. Yeah, yummy. I, I, I'm not like, I don't buy like luxury items, brands, like that's just not my thing. But I was at the airport and it was like tax, did, you know, like. Duty free. Duty free, yeah. And I saw Timothy Chalamet's um, cologne there. Oh, no. <laughs> 
and I did buy it. Oh no! I oh, did wow. buy it. What does it smell like? Yeah, Are you wearing like? it out? I'm not. Oh. Did you smell it before you bought it? A little bit. Yeah. Good. Guess how much it was? Two hundred fifty dollars. Oh no! <laughs> that was a high guess. <laughs> I don't wear perfume. I don't know what it goes for. Fifty? A uh, hundred and fifty. <gasps> Stupid. A hundred and fifty? I know. I hate myself. And then, and then, Ray! and then, and then I went to the bathroom, and I left the the cologne in the bathroom. No. And then, Ray. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm losing <laughs> so much respect from you right now. Like, I see it what in is your happening? eyes. And then as I was like waiting for the plane, I remembered that I left it there and I ran back and it was there and I, and oh, I did get God. it. Oh, you um, $150 down so the drain. So now I can smell like Timothy Chalamet. Do you love Chalamet. the way it smells? I do like it, but only because it makes me think feel like I'm Timothy Chalamet yeah, for yeah. one second. I used to wear my ex-boyfriend's uh, perfume for mm-hmm. cologne just because okay. I, I, I liked... Mind. So yeah. same kind of thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and Timothy but Chalamet n- is my ex-boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cute that you guys used to date. <laughs> you made him who he is. Yeah. <laughs> he learned everything from you. He owes me half his money, actually. <laughs> um, okay. Amazing secrets. I yeah. think we need to wrap up. We do. And get you out of here. I can't believe I said I have no secrets when I got here. And then I just like. You had so many. I came home. out on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we get them out of you. We we're do. really we're good. Yeah. You sit on either side of Breaking. us and just crack us open. Um, is there any anything yeah. that you want to promote Good right point. now oh my god you'll love this tell us i'm in a movie that's uh gonna have a premiere in the summer mm. and it's called bad shabbos stop it like good shabbos but bad shabbos that's amazing <gasps> and it's with method man he's in it you remember him you don't yes. remember him but no. you remember him yeah. but not from well. Wu-Tang Clan. totally yeah yeah you i love that know. guy you don't know um <laughs> but uh <laughs> But yes, it's a, it's a it's about a, a Jewish family and it's a comedy and I'm so excited. Whoa. Is this in the lineage of your vibrator no. thing? No, no, I just get typecast, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm very grateful for. Yeah. I'll take. Bad Shabbos, yeah. bad Shabbos, tomorrow oh. Shabbos. Oh, bad Shabbos to you. Bad Shabbos to bad you. Shabbos bad Shabbos to you. Good Shabbos and bad Shabbos. I'll take any Shabbos you give me. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being Beautiful. on here. This was so yeah. fun. We just want to say quickly that we have a show. Uh, <gasps> we have a show coming up in LA. On February 10th, it's a live Yenta. Yeah. And then we have another live Yenta in Minneapolis at Minneapolis. the Twin Cities Jewish Humor Festival. <gasps> so find us on Instagram. There will be live details Yenta. there. And we're so excited. Minneapolis, come out. It's going to be an amazing show. 